Hi, Tom Stewart here with Cleaning Business Hi. Today. And uh, I've got my partner, Liz Trotter, with me and my partner, Derek Christian, with me. Uh, the service business builders, cleaning business builders, now Castle Keepers Institute. Uh, like we said the other day, we put the band back together. This is cool and we're excited and we're going to talk to you today about uh, smart business moves, with cleaning businesses during the uh, coronavirus pandemic. I have to Tom. What is wrong with you, Derek? Why are you looking so mad or totally serious? <laughs> no, no, just busy. What's on your mind, Derek? Right. Come on, what's going on in your world? Just busy. That's going on around here. Uh, we're trying to keep stay open through this thing with uh, handyman connection, but it's tough because customers are canceling and rescheduling and moving around. And so, what shirt do you have on today? Housing Services Group. Really? Yeah. What shirt did you have on, Tom? Did we even make those? You made those once upon a time. I don't remember. One of like wow. the fifteen IDs that we changed for what company we have for the day. I am confused by why you are wearing housing services group. Did you just not? Do and my maid service over that. So it's like <laughs> it's like Throwback Thursday. <laughs> okay. All right, a little behind in our laundry. Yeah. I like that. But but Tom, I I can't believe you have nerve to ask Derek about what he's wearing. Hey, um, I'm what practicing is, what is up with your outfit. Thing. I'm practicing social distancing. I'm working from home today, so I figured, hey, might as well be comfortable, huh? But 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 you're working still. So basically, what you're saying is you're at home, but you're still working. Yeah, and this okay. is my this is this is my nice goof off clothes. I mean, it gets worse. You know, you should see what I wear when I'm fishing. I have seen that you have. Outfit as well. Yeah. So Tom, are you gonna tell it like it is today? I will tell it like it is. The question came up yesterday. I was a bit surprised. Uh, the, the question, can you use Windex as, as a disinfectant, as a, as a, as a way to uh, mitigate the risk of the coronavirus? And the answer to that question is uh, not if you're doing it professionally, not as a professional house cleaning company. You certainly wouldn't want to make the claim that uh, Windex is a disinfectant. It's not registered by the EPA as a disinfectant. It does have some isopropyl alcohol in it, but it's diluted with water. And this was a variation of it that has isopropyl alcohol and um, ammonia in it as well. But it's also diluted with a, with a, with a lot of uh, water and some other uh, cleaning agents. The fact of the matter is you can use it as a cleaner, maybe a general purpose cleaner to remove the soil from a surface before putting the you know, disinfectant on that would, would actually be killing the germs. Not to say that it might not have some effect of killing, you know, some of, or, or, or disabling some of the, um, the, 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 the virus that's on the surface because it's rather fragile. But as cleaning professionals, it would be a really bad idea. It would, be, it would not be professional. It would be inappropriate for us to offer it as a, uh, as a way of, of, of killing germs as a different platform. So, Tom, I have, I have a really, I have to interrupt you real quick while you're looking up your little link there. Um, yep. I saw that you did say um, as far as killing the virus, but then you corrected that to disable the virus, right? Yeah. Go ahead and maybe you could tell it like it is around that as well. A, a virus, people talk about germs in general and I guess there's several varieties, but, but primarily you're talking about bacteria and you're talking about viruses. Bacteria are like little self-contained living organisms and you put some bacteria on a surface and if it's got a food source and if there's some moisture and enough, uh, you know, the right amount of heat, it'll grow. I mean, though you, you've seen studies where you can take like a Petri dish with the agar in it and put some bacteria in it and you know, it, it, it propagates. Viruses are not able to live by themselves. They have to basically hook up with another living organism, a cell. So um, a virus in and of itself is there looking for uh, a body to, 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 to uh, be introduced to so it can start getting into cells. Now, once it's in your cells, it'll propagate, but in and of itself, it won't grow on the surface by itself, I guess is the point. So it's not living until it's, it's not alive, right? 
So a virus right. is not a living thing. So that's you can't kill it because it's not alive. So there's but nothing. You can. As far as the coronavirus is concerned, it's an RNA uh, envelope which has like a, a protein shell around it, which is, is really fragile. And it doesn't take a whole lot to break that 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 shell that's around it. Once that's uh, once that's compromised, then it's 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 basically ineffective. It's not a viable uh, pathogen at that point. Well, I really like that you said disable it. I'm going to use that term. I hadn't heard that yet. I'm like, okay, that still that still sounds good. I mean, kill sounds better. <laughs> Killed it, but uh, in the absence of being able to use that word and still having some accuracy, I'm going to go with disable. Right, I'm, I'm dropping several links here in our chat, in our comments that I think might be useful. On, um, if you really want to know what's in Windex or what makes it work, I've got a link for that. I've got a link, um, a couple of links that, that talk about disinfectants. And if you we're talking to clients, if you're promoting your service and you're talking about uh, the, the, the actual products you use to, to deal with uh, viruses and, and, and bacteria and other pathogens, um, you don't want to take a product and present it as a disinfectant if it's not recognized by the EPA is, is the point. So a lot of people talk about tea tree oil and vinegar and i know this is not on your agenda today tom but nobody's on commenting so i'm asking anyway a lot of people talk about tea tree oil and vinegar as being natural disinfectants what do you what do you think about that if we're putting ourselves forth as professionals in the industry especially during this time now where there's so much concern about you know the spread of the coronavirus and and breaking the chain of infection um i, I personally believe that so that we're responsible and from a consumer standpoint i would, would would like to hope and think that consumers are looking for something more than that okay awesome hey sarah uh thank you too for for being uh consistently helpful hey sarah Any news today? Anything going on in the world that 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 uh, we should should be talking about? What what's going on in uh, D.C., Derek? Um, well, you may have heard the Senate passed the uh, stimulus plan they were talking about. There's a lot of stuff in there, and the details haven't come out yet. Um, the bill is supposedly 800 pages, and then the bureaucrats then have to take that and turn it into rules. Um, but there's a couple things in there. The one that's getting the most attention right now is they made a change to unemployment and everyone who's on unemployment related to coronavirus, um, the way it is currently written will get an extra $600 a week. Um, there was a little bit of a blow up where uh, some of the Republicans said that that was a mistake, that that bill was never supposed to say that. It was supposed to say that they can get up to an extra $600 a week, um, up to their maximum level of pay. So I don't know if you know this, but unemployment is capped um, in most markets at about 600 a week. Um, it varies depending what state you're in, but for most of us, it's 600 a week or two thirds pay, um, whichever's less. So if you're somebody who was making $50,000 a year, you end up getting a very small fraction of your pay. So one of the things they had done is made this rule that you would get $600 up to $600 a week. But when the law was actually written, the Republicans say it was a mistake that it was left in, that everyone gets an extra 600. The Democrats said it wasn't a mistake. We meant it to be that way. And uh, it passed the Senate and they're saying they're going to try to fix it in the House. But there's some debate whether or not that's going to happen. And the reason why that matters, if you're a home cleaner and you're making $500 a week, when you go on unemployment, you make $300, 60, two thirds of that. Well, when the government then gives you an extra 600 a week, you're now making 900 a week on unemployment. Well, you make 500 a week when you're working. So when we call them and want them all to return to work, they're going to lose about $400 a week. Um, that's not going to make us very popular. You know, we're, we're going to be calling people and being, hey, yeah, you can come back to work. And they're going to be like, no, I don't want to come back to work. I'm making almost twice as much sitting watching Netflix than I am working for you. Um, now, we don't want to get too hung up on it because it hasn't passed the house yet. Um, it 
Honestly, it looks like it's probably going to pass the House with the $600 in it, though. Um, there's a fair amount of debate on it, but um, a fair a number of the leading Democrats have come out and said, well, if you have a problem getting your people to return to work, maybe you should pay them more. Um, and another thing that some people have said is the reason we did it this way is most of the state's unemployment systems are antiquated and hard to reprogram. And to write the algorithm to figure out how much they can be paid and change the maximum amounts and all that would be too difficult. And it's just easier to go in and write a little code that says add $600 to everyone. Um, and they said, because we want to get the money out as quickly as possible, we're just going to add $600 to everyone who's on unemployment. Um, at least for me, it has had exactly the effect that you would hope it didn't have. Um, I had had nobody because Handyman Connections and Essential Service, and we're actually still relatively busy. So I had not offered to lay anyone out. Well, I had two guys last night text me and say they would like to go on unemployment because my guys make 800 a week. So under that formula, they would make $1,100 on unemployment. So I had a couple of guys sit around and figure out that they could make $1,100 a week if they didn't work or $800 a week if they did. So two guys last night texted me and said, hey, I'm really getting concerned about this virus. I think I need to go on unemployment. I don't think it's a mistake that that happened the night that that was passed. So it's but they can't definitely just leading go on unemployment. Well, that's the tricky thing. Now I can say, no, we're busy, but then it gets real uncomfortable when you're telling somebody you need to keep working when they're saying, I don't want to work, I'm uncomfortable. So Am I going to say, okay, you can, but I'm not approving your unemployment? I don't know what to do because I don't want to approve it because then they go tell all the other guys, hey, if you stop working, you make more money. I mean, that could spread like a virus through my company and I could lose all my employees. So yeah, a little bit of a tough choice for me. So I'm kind of hoping they fix it tomorrow, but I'm not crossing my fingers either. I'm kind of, I'm not counting on it. Um, now that's the bad side. The plus side is they did announce $350 billion worth of additional loans for small businesses under 500 employees. Um, and it's got some really interesting provisions in it that says um, if you keep your employee, your, your employees um, at within 10% of what you had previously, um, then what will happen, sorry, I'm not doing very well, um, is you can get the loan forgiven. So basically, it's no longer a loan. It's a gift. You only pay the interest, um, but only for what you paid for payroll, rent, and utilities. But that's a lot of money for me. So um, that's interesting, but they haven't published the details. You know, a lot of people have asked, well, wait a minute. What if I already laid my people off? And from my understanding is the intent is once you reopen, if you bring those people back on at the same level or close to the same level, you would qualify for it. So that's another one of those where we're waiting for the details, but that gets me really excited because the SBA loan program is kind of neat and interesting and great. I can get a low interest loan, but the idea that it's going to become a grant if I actually rehire all my people, that's really interesting because now all of a sudden it's free money and our employees can play the free money from the government game. So can I. Um, so, but that's where it gets tricky though for me to get my, to get my free money from the government. I got to get those employees to come back to work. So yeah. yeah. They've made it a little tricky for me. So I see there's some debate going on that if I don't lay people off or approve them as leaving, can they get unemployment? No, they can't. Um, but once again, that puts me in a little bit of an uncomfortable position. Um, do I go out and tell those guys, you can't get unemployment, I have work for you, and have them be pretty pissed off at me for coming to work? It's sort of like a snow day, okay? I look at it this way. One of the guiding principles I had with my maid services is when it snows, if my employees are uncomfortable driving, I don't make them drive. I don't ever want somebody to be in front of a trial attorney and, and saying, well, I told him that I didn't know how to drive in the snow and he made me drive. So I'm already a little concerned of my liability on this virus thing. And if I've got an employee who sent me in writing, hey, I'm worried about the virus, I would like to go on unemployment. And I say no, and then anything happens. Ugh. So it's a little bit of an uncomfortable situation. So what I'm thinking possibly as a middle ground is I may offer to let those two guys go on sick leave. Um, we talked about that two days ago where they can go on sick leave and get two thirds of their pay. Um, the extra $600 only employs, applies to unemployment. So I'm thinking I might write back to him and go, oh, completely understand your concern that you want to self-quarantine. Um, you're not going on unemployment, though. It's what's called sick leave. You'll be getting a check for me for the next couple of weeks. 
Um, I'm suspecting when they realize they won't make more money, they may decide they want to come back to work. Um, and if they do decide to take sick leave, as long as it's not too many people, I'll get the, that money back versus my payroll taxes that we talked about two days ago. So anyway, there's a lot going on. We don't want to get too hung up on it because it hasn't all passed yet. But that's what we're really nervous about is our employees could end up making I, I when I did the math, it was like twenty four dollars an hour by not working. But, you know, we've been doing this for a while. And as it pertains to this particular piece of legislation, it really hasn't passed. I mean, I don't know. I, I suspect the House is still having some deliberation on it. I think a, a vote is scheduled tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. So, yes. At best, we're going to vote on it tomorrow morning, and then it has to make its way to the White House. And I guess the presumption is that uh, the president will sign it, but, but who knows? And realistically, from talking to, to, to and doing some reading today as well, you know, we really won't know what's going on in, until the regulations are, are, are written. So it's going to be, be days probably before we really have a good understanding. I would presume that you know, early next week, we'll, we'll have some answers to some of these really basic questions. But I've talked to a lot of people today and I've spent a lot of time talking about this, actually. And I'm, I'm, I'm you know, Liz and I were talking about it. And, and you know, we need to we need to be using it better, I guess, quite frankly, um, for a couple of reasons. This isn't within our circle of influence. We're just speculating. We really don't know. So, you know, we can play some what if scenarios through. But probably what's in our mind is a lot worse than what's really going to happen. We've been through a lot of this stuff before. Um, go back to when minimum wages were, were, were going up. Uh, some some states a material amount. It's like, my gosh, how are we going to make this work? But we figured out how to adjust our bill rates and manage our businesses away where we're just as profitable as we ever was. Our back when the Affordable Care Act was, was, was coming on board, there was a lot of concern and fear of what that's going to do to small business, but we we're able to navigate that and everything's okay. Um, I think that we're going to, we're, you know, I'm confident that we're, we're going to be fine with this because this isn't a piece of legislation that's focused on our particular industry. This is going to affect millions of companies, millions of employers. So there's this concept of being protected by the masses. Congress isn't going to put forth legislation to put us all out of business. The idea is they want us to be in business and they want us to be hiring and paying a bunch of people. So however they sort this out, I have to believe it's going to be done in a way that's going to give us rational incentives to be hiring people and, and finding something for them to do that, that that's productive and doing it in a way where we can be profitable. We'll know more next week. Um, but you it's know, not going to be pretty, and it's not going to be easy, and it's not going to be fun. No, no. Then again, we haven't. It's been a while. I mean, I don't know if it's ever been easy or fun. It's probably been been harder and less fun recently, and it has has been in a while. Um. Well, one thing I have noticed around this is that I have seen as really encouraging is a lot of business owners that in the past were maybe a little bit complacent and just sort of going along. This might not be great and fun. I've seen a lot of engagement with uh, business owners really digging in and thinking about their businesses and, um, you know, thinking about next move and what they're going to do. Uh, we do have a couple of questions over here, Tom. Do you see uh, Linda Cavazos? says, what are your thoughts on business interruption insurance? As a rule, business interruption insurance will protect your business in the event that your your office is compromised by, you know, some natural disaster. You lose assets um, that prevent you from, from doing work. Um, it doesn't protect you when your customers stop doing business with you. Um, it's like getting insurance if you lose a customer. There really isn't anything for, for, for that either. And this is really more in that area. We've talked to uh, professionals in the, in, in the insurance industry. And for all practical purposes, there is no insurance mechanism to protect you against loss of business for something like this. Theoretically, there is. I mean, you can go to Lloyd's of London and insure anything for anything, but practically, none of us would have insurance that would indemnify us for, for loss of business because of, of coronavirus. 
You know, you did say something though that um, made me think, huh, I wonder if there's a twist around there. You said usually it's around loss of assets. Um, aren't our employees considered assets in some way, shape or form? Nothing that the uh, that our insurance company typically in, in, in insures like a replacement value yeah. type of thing. They're not yeah. going to write us a check if you that know. would be bad. Actually, I could see that going in all sorts of bad ways. Yeah. Um, Sarah says, "Have been told you have to have a physical property loss may vary by state, which I I think is exactly what what Tom is saying too." Um. Anyway, I, uh, I I did like what you're saying, Tom, about, you know, smart business move is don't spend your time working outside of your circle of influence. But I do think that part of what's happening for people is they don't know what to do. And, and because of that, they need to feel busy and like they're doing something, taking charge. I mean, um, most people that know me have heard me say at least 100 times that the biggest source of happiness is control. And so when we when we lose that control, we lose our sense of self and happiness and, and safety and security. And because we can't, we don't have control over this. We don't know where to go, what to do. We're spending a lot of time trying to make ourselves feel like we're doing something, like we are actually taking action and we're taking charge and that we're in control where, you know, <laughs> talking, ad nauseum about this is, isn't really anywhere. I, I read an article that's why people are out hoarding toilet paper because when you don't have control over the situation I mean that's one thing that you can do to make yourself feel like you're doing something. Yeah makes sense to me. Yeah absolutely. Makes there, sense. Are, there are things within our circle of influence that are specific to, to our business. We talk about being protected by the masses. This whole, you know, everything's happening with the legislation and paid at FMLA and paid sick time. There's millions of other companies that are going to be dealing with the same thing. And at the end of the day, you have to trust the government. It's not trying to put us all out of business. We know rationally they aren't. Um, so that's what I mean, protected by the masses. But the thing specific to our business that there's only really one entity that's going to be taking care of us and that's us as the business business owners and we've been talking the last several days about you really need to be working hard on the finance side of this and there's two sides of that equation take as much expense as you can and push it out into the future we're talking about you know, rent and leases and car loans and bank notes and anything out there that where these are financial obligations that you're paying on every month, just about every creditor out there is expecting a call from you, asking for some type of uh, consideration to, to, to push those payments out, do as much of that as you can. On the flip side, SBA has, has loan programs. Please, if you haven't talked to your bank yet, please talk to them tomorrow because um, most banks have programs right now where they're making loans to, to their small business clients just to help them stay in business. So Tom, I have a question there. Um, I've been approached multiple times now by small business owners that have said to me, yeah, but everybody keeps saying to call your bank, but the bank's not going to loan me any money. I, I was barely making it. And now with this, why are they, I don't have anything to lend against. I don't even have anything. What do you say to those people, Tom? They're offering unsecured loans. You don't have to have any collateral. What they, you know, under normal circumstances, that's a true statement because you need them more than they need you because they've got, you know, thousands of, of clients and you're just one. But it's a situation right now where all of their clients are in the same boat. And if they don't take these measures, just a couple dimensions of it. One, if they don't take these measures to keep their clients in business, they're not going to be in business because without small businesses, you know, that's, a, that's a huge chunk of their revenue. So they need to keep us in business. Secondly, the government is pushing them to do this. You know, the Federal Reserve uh, is putting like another $350 billion out there for small business, but they're not just doing that. They're taking it to the Treasury, basically 
and leveraging it up. It's going to be like four up to like four trillion dollars. I mean, these are just unfathomable amounts of money. And that's above and beyond what the SBA is doing. So they call it helicopter money. If you can just imagine a helicopter flying around out there, just throwing throwing money out the window. So so ask, we'll be surprised. Okay, good. Um, that's what I've been telling people. Um, another thing that I've seen people doing um, or not doing, I, I, I mean, I love this about Derek today. We had a call and uh, we were all supposed to be on the call at, I don't know what time it was. And Tom, you reached out and Derek's like, nope, dude, I'm, I'm triple booked. And, and he's not triple booked because he's on Facebook talking to people. <laughs> he goes, what are you doing? Selling a house, Derek, today? Yeah, I was doing an inspection for a house I was selling. Yeah, so I mean, at, at some point, again, smart businesses keep moving forward. You know, don't don't focus on what you can't do and how bad it is, but what can you do? Like Tom said, call a bank, call your bank. That's one of the things. I mean, I, I actually almost think we need a list. Here are 10 things you can do. One, one call your bank. Two, call anybody that you have uh, a loan through. Three, um, call your mortgage lender or your landlord. You know, there's there's a lot that you can do. So start trying to focus on what you can do instead of what you can't do. You're not going to get anywhere focusing on what you can't do. And, and not to say that there's anything wrong with sometimes focusing on what you can't do because, you know, sometimes you just find yourself there. But when you find yourself there, stop. Okay, what can I do? There are things I can do and things I should be doing. And, and push yourself that way, you will feel good. And we all know this, for, for those of us that tend to uh, procrastinate, once we get ourselves doing the thing, it's easy to keep doing it. It's like, okay, yeah, feels good. It's like, get in there and do the thing first, right? So whatever your list is, of things that you should be doing, start. Just start doing it. Oh, I see we've got Linda's got. With employees on unemployment due to COVID-19, will there be a penalty on the rate the business normally pays? This question has a lot of um, pieces to it. Yeah, I mean, I, the rules are written by every single state, so they're all a little different. But most of the states have announced that if you go on COVID-19 related unemployment, that it will not hit your individual history. The way they're doing that in Ohio is they've, I don't know if you know this, if a big employer lays off a bunch of people, there's normally what's called a, la, a mass layoff ID. It's basically a little code you put in. And in Ohio, they're giving us a specific code that if you're laid off related to COVID-19, you use this code. And in, when you put that in, it codes you that you're, you got laid off because of COVID-19. Um, that's how they're doing it in Ohio. I can't speak for every state. Um, but you use the COVID-19 mass layoff number. Um, it will not hit your individual history. Um, so it's not going to hit my um, unemployment in particular. That being said, um, we are going to have record unemployment like the country's never seen. That has to be paid for somehow. And unemployment is a insurance pool. So ev everyone's rates are going to be going up. It's just, it just is. Now you're, the good news is you're going to be included with big companies like Procter and Gamble and the GEs and the people who are working at home and paying their people still that aren't laying people off the medical care facilities, people like my business that are still open. So as you're laying people off, um, there are people that are going to help offset it. So chances are you're going to get hit with about 20% of the actual cost, but you're going to get hit with it. It is going to go up. Um, but there's no reason for you not to, because if you don't lay people off, what's going up probably is the overall pool. So you don't need to worry about your individual rate, but we also need to be realistic that whatever your forecast is for future unemployment costs, you should probably up it, in my opinion, by probably 20%, just to cover your butt a little bit, because it is gonna go up. Now, they just announced uh, in the, na the national legislation that's about to go through is supposed to allow 1099 employees and contractors to draw unemployment as well, which is really tricky because unemployment is technically insurance and they've never paid into the insurance pool. Um, so I don't know how that's going to affect things. Are they going to start making 1099 employees pay unemployment because they're drawn from it? So I don't know. 
that's the details that they have to figure out. Um, but like I said, the punchline is there's no reason not to use it. It's not like if you lay everyone off, your rate's going to triple next year. But plan on your rate going up next year. Anyone who tells you it's not going to affect your unemployment is wrong. It's going to affect everyone's unemployment. It's just not going to affect you directly. If I'm not I'm your explaining. personal experience rating. Right. It's not going to affect your personal experience rating, but the average that we all use goes up. So if the average cost is 100 and your experience rating is 1.2, now the average is going to be 120. So your individual rating is not going to go up, but the average cost is going to go up. So that's basically what's going to happen. So there's no reason not to do it because whether you lay them off or not, you're probably going to have that expense go up. Just to put it in perspective, last week alone, 3.3 million people filed for unemployment. Going back to the beginning of time since they tracked it, the highest week they ever had was a little less than 700,000. So somewhere between four and five times as many people applied for unemployment last week than what the previous record was. I mean, and this in, is just crazy. And in Ohio, our unemployment server crashed again. It was up briefly for about 12 hours yesterday. So um, since this whole thing has started, our unemployment website's been alive for about 36 hours. So there's a huge backlog of people in Ohio that haven't even applied yet. And I imagine the other states are also crashing. Yes, of course. And, and, and it's the same. It's, it's like the SBA uh, website applying for their disaster loans. The website's down more than it's up. Yeah. So as far as um, talking about, I'm going to go back to what can we do. So if if we're in this situation and the, the unemployment uh, site is down and what what can we do how can we be helpful can we just be encouraging can we you know what, what are some of the things that we can do outside of the the things that we've already the basic things that we've talked about is there anything else we can do and good job Sarah I see you went to the bank and you're looking good good glad to hear that is there what, what else can we do you guys well uh we need to be thinking about you know, what our business is going to look like on, on the other side of this. Um, we also need to be, depend, depends, it depends on where we are within our business cycle. If we're still conducting business every day and, and kind of like, you know, situation normal, we need to make sure that we're, you know, taking extra caution to, to make sure that our employees are safe, our clients are safe and, the whole communication that, that 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 goes along with that. If we've shut down operations or partially shut down operations, we need to be thinking about taking care of the clients, staying in touch with the clients, and taking staying in touch with our with our employees as well. If 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 they've been displaced, to keep everybody in the loop and the communication flow, make sure they're you know they know that that that, that you care and. You know that there's no surprises down the road because you don't want to lose either one of them so if we're doing business we need to make sure that everybody's safe and if we aren't doing business we still need to make sure everybody's safe and and they're still part of of of, of our life when we start doing business again i think that's really important right now so do either of you guys have any um um, opinion on like where where businesses should be going should they be um, um, trying to pivot into commercial should they be doubling down on residential should they just be trying to wait it out do are there do you guys have any opinions on where to go there what do you think Derek um well uh, my internet's been spotty because everyone's streaming once around here um, I think that residential is going to come back, but it'll probably be down by about 20%. Um, I also think that, and it all depends how long this goes. Um, I also think a lot of our competitors are going to close up. I think a lot of people who thought run, uh, running the business was easy, um, just got an abject lesson on why sometimes it's better to work for somebody else. Um, so that that's going to be interesting to see. Um, I do think there's going to be a lot of demand for 
things like common area cleaning that maybe were not as important to people as they used to be. Um, I think there's going to be some opportunities to talk about science and cleaning and how important cleaning is and what your procedures are. Um, I got to say, um, I think people are going to look at teams of cleaners a little differently than they used to. Um, and the idea of having fewer people in their house is going to be attractive to them. So that's something we're going to need to think about. I honestly am just trying to take advantage of the time and the fact that we're slowing down um, to take the opportunity to do search engine optimization, to um, find new sources of customers. So we've been trying to find um, commercial accounts we can work for. We've been trying to find whatever we can to kind of fill the pipeline. And even though we're in, in Castle Keeper's case, we're closed and Handyman Connections case, we're slow is we're trying to use this opportunity to get stronger. A lot of people are watching the news obsessively and not doing stuff. And like you said, we've kind of decided we can't do anything about all of that. What we can do is that long list of things we've always wanted to do, like create landing pages and we never had time to create the content, have a lot more time all of a sudden. So we're trying to get some of that stuff done. Uh, so Lisa, good good tip there. Uh, if you guys can see Lisa's comment, uh, her people had really good luck um, going through unemployment in the middle of the night. So. No, they're not going to be working anymore. They, they can get up at 2 in the morning <laughs> and get out of employment. Uh, let's see. Uh, Elena wants to know, when do when do you plan on doing business again, Tom, for Castle Keepers? We um, made the decision late last week to uh, discontinue field service operations was the term that we used for two weeks up through, I think, April 3rd. Um, we're, we're, we're talking to our employees, we're talking to our clients, and we're in a process. I mean, we're, 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 we're talking to them on a regular basis, and we're sending out emails. And the general message is, you know, we want to make sure you're okay. We, on, the, on our, you know, employee side, we're, we're, we're checking to see where they are with, with, with unemployment. When we're also checking to see... You know, you guys are ready to come back to work, and we're ready to come back to work. And the, the largest part of them are like, "Yeah, I'll come clean homes tomorrow if, if, if you're ready to do that." And, and we aren't, but you know, that's part of the answer to your question. The other part of the answer to your question is, where are our clients with all of this? And there's a spectrum, and there's some that are staying at home. They're doing the social distancing, and they're trying to basically break the chain of infection and they're sequestered in their home and they don't want anybody else coming in, including their cleaning company. Quite honestly, I think that that's probably the best thing for everybody to be doing from a social standpoint. On the other end of the spectrum, there are people who are conducting life as normal. In some cases, you know, their, their jobs were, you know, they don't have the luxury of doing anything else but that. And they see house cleaning service as something that's a necessity. And, you know, we do think that we're an essential service under the right circumstances. And that could be one of those right circumstances. And we're contemplating how we can do as much as we can do to help with the social distancing and, and, and breaking the back of this thing. But at the same time, supporting the people who need a house cleaning service. And if they don't use us, they're going to be using somebody else anyway. And that's really the thing that we're thinking about. We would rather for them to use us because we believe that we're more qualified. We're more knowledgeable. We are going to keep, you know, everybody safer than the next best alternative. And they might not even find the next best alternative. So I think you're yeah. tapping into what Elena asks, too. She says, if, if it's before we have an actual cure or vaccine, which sounds like it will be, what yes. are the things you're going to do to have your staff and clients, to keep your staff and clients safe? Hopefully, before too long, there'll be an abundance of PPE on the market. And, you know, right now, it's kind of a catch-22. You know, the, 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 the responsible thing to do from a societal standpoint is to let all of that flow to, to the healthcare providers because they don't even have uh, the, the, the tools that they need. Um, you know, gloves are important. It, it, it wouldn't uh, surprise me that if it, it doesn't become more commonplace for, uh, for procedure masks, people call them surgical masks, that they don't, they're not really um, like respirators, like the N95 
five, but but they uh, do offer protection from other people if if you as an individual are uh, are, are are contagious. And um, I could see I could see those types of things becoming more commonplace and and almost expected, but not at the moment because there's just not enough of it out there. Yeah. Um. Oh, the, hey, Heather, Trisha, Sarah. Hi, guys. Uh, I'm like, so what are these guys? Oh, they're just tagging. <laughs> Hi, y'all. Uh, I had a question. Oh, okay. Um, so I know somebody called me today, and um, she has a conflict because she's trying to stay open. She really wants to stay open for her employees. She wants to stay open because she believes that she's actually helping to, you know, break the chain of infection. Um, and she feels like the community needs her. So she really wants to do what she can um, to help. But she got a call today. One of their clients is now um, positive, tested positive. And before she comes home from the hospital, she wants to have her home cleaned. And so now the question is, what do we do? How do we say no to the portion of the population that needs us the most? If I don't clean it, who's going to clean it? And how, you know, how does that whole thing happen? Should she refer her to um, like, uh, oh, who are the people? Like crime scene cleanup, but they usually are dealing with uh, live live organisms and and stuff so how how does how does that play out what what do you guys think it, i mean it, 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 in the hospital i would ask her what did the healthcare workers wear when she i mean it depends how bad she was like if she was an icu they'll be in in in, in, in full respirator you know, gear and 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 you know the the whole gust Ghostbuster suit type deal, and they're doing that for a reason. It's that contagious and it's that deadly. And if she had that virus when she was living in her home, then you know, I guess maybe it's a question of how long she had been in the hospital as well. I mean, the other side of that argument, I was going down the path of you know, she needs people that have the same gear as what she saw in the hospital, but on the other side of that argument. You know the, the 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 viability of the virus, uh, like on a, on a, on a surface. You know, I've seen one study that says under some conditions it can can be viable up to nine days, but that's like an extreme case. I think most people believe on most surfaces it's it's two days, and sometimes a matter of a couple of hours, just depending upon the surface. So if she's been in the hospital for like a couple of weeks, the likelihood of there being any viable you know, uh, virus in her home would be small. I Unless think I saw, didn't we see plastic town for 72 hours? Yeah, there's a study. This, this the, the uh, article that we have on cleaning business today has a bunch of footnotes and references. And in that article, we say that there have, it has been seen to be viable up to nine days. If you find that reference and click on it, mm -hmm. it'll take you to a study that it lists all kinds of different surfaces and the the the, the viability the amount of the, the amount of time it's viable and all those different surfaces under different conditions for several different viruses including I think, uh, I think the longest one though was plastic right for and I, i'm pretty sure it was like 72 74 hours something like that 73. i think a steel plate actually maybe was was, was the highest I can't. I, I don't. I don't recall. But the study is 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 is, yeah. is in there, and it's the the actual. It's a it's a it's a variation of the SARS virus that actually causes COVID nineteen. Coronavirus is the disease. The actual virus is SARS something or another. I forget all the details. COVID nineteen is the disease. Right. Coronavirus slash COVID nineteen is the disease that you have. You're late to the call, Trisha. I already gave him grief about that. See, Trisha even says you're mean mugging it, Derek. <laughs> he says mm. he's just busy, thinking a lot, you know? And, and he's also muted. Pensive. All right, I'm so. Sorry. 
<laughs> so he, you can tell when he's talking to somebody he likes on, on the computer when we're talking because all of a sudden he'll start smiling <laughs> when we're talking about something really serious. We're like, Derek, who are you talking to? <laughs> all right, so we got a couple of questions here. Um, Dan, it says, that is something to think about. How can we offer our services then when someone tests positive, not service them, right? It's something to think about, or can we or not? And then um, she also says, are we really essential or not? And are we prepared for that type of cleanup? So uh, it would be really awesome if there was just one answer there. But so much of that, that question, is, the answer to that question is steeped in opinion right now, right? So, and I think science is there. I would argue if there was interior space that we had good reason to believe that there were viable SARS viruses that cause uh, COVID-19, that we are not qualified to do that and we should not take that on as, as a responsibility. You know, healthcare workers, and there are you know, trained professionals who are trained to do that type of work. That's their job description. People who sign up for our services to be a house cleaner aren't trained, nor are they, I mean, that's not part of their job description to do biohazard, you know, get into to, to those types of, 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 of situations. That is, you know, you know, I would I, honestly that is that it, that would, would 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 not be good good practice on our part to to, to put them in, in harm's way. We are responsible for our employees' safety, and if we knowingly put them into a situation like that and they contracted uh, coronavirus, there could be some some real liability associated with that. Um, typically, typically, if if an employee gets sick even if it's like in the workplace and the, you know, somebody has the flu and somebody else gets the flu, there's no liability there. That's just part of the human condition, but this is a different, different situation. And this is, this is, this is going to be handled a little bit differently. We're going to see a ton of litigation on this down the road. So um, let's see, David made a distinction that uh, essential and prepared are different. And, and I, I would agree with that. That, that does make sense to me. You also said something, Tom, you said that we're responsible for our people. What do you think about this new idea that Don Finn is um, um, espousing right now that we're not responsible for our, our people, we're responsible to them, but we're not responsible for them, that they're responsible for themselves and their own choices? Well, we're responsible to them in a lot of regards, but we're, we are responsible for their safety while they're on the workplace. Legally, we are legally. Yeah. Yeah. Having an OSHA audit, you're legally responsible for the safety of your yeah. employees. Yeah, we'll give you more details if you want to know. But yeah. There's a lot of people who extend that and think they're responsible for making sure everybody has a paycheck and everybody is happy and, you know. Yeah. And no, we're responsible to them, but they're human beings and they're responsible for a whole lot of things. But the safety component, like Derek said, that's on yeah. us. We are responsible for that. Yeah, there's great big federal laws and big fines to cover that. And the thing that is really um, the proof to me around that is how truthful of a statement that is, is uh, every once in a while you'll get an employee that says, hey, I'll just sign something saying that I'll accept responsibility because I don't want to wear gloves. And if anything happens to me because of that, that I'll sign something saying that I'll take that responsibility. They can't. Legally, even if they sign something saying that, we're still responsible. So that, that to me, really explains how, how much that responsi uh, responsibility lands on us. Um, Danit, and I don't know if your name is pronounced Danit or Danit, or I'm sorry that if I keep pronouncing it wrong, I, I apologize. Um, one of your values is integrity. I agree that everybody has to make make the choice themselves. And you said you had a doctor client get really upset that you're still sending cleaners out. I had a doctor called us, wants us out twice a week. Right, so uh, you're right. Everybody's making different decisions. And I'm sure there's some science in here 
that is te- that could tell us what we really should be doing or not doing or how to be prepared, like David David says, even if we are considered essential. But it's so wrapped up in so many other things, right? We, we've been talking every day now for an hour for how long, Tom? Has it only been a week? It's been a couple of weeks, maybe. A couple of weeks and a couple of days, actually. All right. I feel a little bit better. Um, and it, there still isn't Danit. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I had a feeling that it might be Danit instead of Danit. Uh, so um, I, there's just so much that even even with the stuff we do know, there's so many little twisty things that we don't know or that we're still afraid of. Even if we know this one piece, what about this other maybe thing over here? Are we willing to take the risk? You know, it's just scary. Heather, we have business interruption insurance, but it only covers damages to the property when we can run our businesses. No, we called our insurance broker. And that's the same thing that um, Sarah was saying as well. And so was Tom. Liz, we have a stay at home order and cleaners aren't listed in that Boulder County. Um, I can tell you that uh, one of the things that you can do is you can reach out to your local government and ask them. Um, I know two companies right now. The first one that's coming to mind is Tyler Pendleton that um, he reached out and he got a signed letter saying that he is listed as an essential service. He is, they agree that he's um, considered an essential service, even though he was not listed on the original uh, document that was sent out. So now I'm not saying that that could be your case, Denise, but you don't you don't know what you don't know. Again, right back to yeah, here in Ohio, the county health department yeah. decided, and they've said that cleaning is essential in Ohio. So, and their feedback was, you need to use your logic. If you're cleaning for you know, we clean for a fair amount of uh, people with some type of disability who physically can't clean for themselves. And they said, you are definitely essential because if you don't clean, bad things happen in those people's houses. If, if there's other households where you're probably not essential, and they said, just use your judgment and keep your people safe, is basically what they said. Well, makes sense. Uh, I, I, it's different everywhere and it's confusing. I had somebody hit me up yesterday. Listen, I just don't understand uh, how am I not listed as an essential business, but the liquor store is like how, why? And, and in her state also, they have dispensaries. So she's like, and the dispensary, I, I don't understand. I'll say, well, here in Ohio, they, listed, they listed landscapers and painters as essential. And a lot of people have been like, how is getting your house painted essential? Um, yeah. Same thing. Yeah, although I can understand painting being a little bit more essential than liquor stores. Maybe, maybe that's just because I don't drink. <laughs> maybe if I drank, I would be totally understanding this more. Stress management part of this, that maybe that maybe. is the thing. Come on, Liz, David. <laughs> no, I can totally, can, can you guys all just picture David? Come on, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, David. Yeah, so uh, I, I don't know. It's it's a loose term. We have a, a different, a stronger lockdown right now in Washington that just went into effect last night. And construction companies are no longer um, considered essential. And they, they had been before. Yeah. So, that's uh, mm-hmm. where, where was that, Liz? That's in Washington. The whole state? I believe it's a state, but I'm not going to swear to that because I didn't see it myself. We should change our careers and be therapists. <laughs> you. <laughs> you think we got problems now? <laughs> you want to be dealing with people like us? Uh, Sarah, they're looking for Everclear for alternative hand <laughs> sanitizer. Does it have a high enough content? I'm guessing it does, right? High enough alcohol sure. content? There are some, there are Go some ahead. stories like there's one here in Charleston that basically retold and instead of making vodka, they're now making hand sanitizer. You just need to show up with a bottle and they're handing out hand sanitizer. Yeah, 
Well, ours is handing out the little small ones to our distillery, but they're also selling the gallons for $20. And then they ask for a donation if you want to pay any more than that. And I got a few gallons. I'm not going to lie. Sounded like a good deal to me. Uh, David, we're pro we provided therapy for a lot of our clients and a lot of our employees sometimes, right? Uh, truth be told. And sometimes we're on the receiving end of that. Yes. Yes. Uh, Elena, what software do you use for this shared live? Uh, are we using... Uh, this is a platform called StreamYard. StreamYard.com. We've, we've played around with the schedule, and Elena, this is... I, I really like this one. I like this one. We used be live for a while, and this is worked a lot better for us. Yeah. I like this one too. Uh, this one doesn't seem to have as good of um, options for announcing in advance though, does it Tom? You haven't been able to find it, that? It, it does, I'm just lazy. Oh, okay. <laughs> truth, truth will out. Hmm. I'm not All lazy, right. I'm busy, okay? All right, we'll give you that. You you look really busy there, Tom, with your your vodka and your your your, your um, fishing shirts and yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so seriously though, Tom, uh, we've got three minutes left, so we got two things that we have to do here. One is get your link up there, and then talk about what is um, on the agenda for tomorrow. Anybody have anything of specific concern or interest that they would like to hear about tomorrow? Um, otherwise, we will. We know there's going to be stuff if if tomorrow morning at nine o'clock the house is supposed to be signing this bill my guess is we're going to be talking a little bit more about that tomorrow but uh, maybe there is something else that somebody might want to hear about whoa yeah, oh. just close your eyes it'll be okay <laughs> Derek, I'm you're doing this for one you're getting hit up again, Derek, okay. with a smile, Derek. Yeah, Here sorry. I okay. see I was distracting uh, everybody, Tom, while you made that mess. Can you uh, see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So this is cleaningbusinesstoday.com. On the right-hand side here, um, we're sending out – how many how many newsletters a, a week are we doing now, Derek? Uh, I do at least three, sometimes daily. It just kind of varies. So if you're not getting them, there's a reason for that. You need to uh, go ahead and just give us your email, first, last name, and, and you'll be on that list. Um, we were talking about essential services and what states are looking at it, how, well, no, no, we were talking about coronavirus and what services it lives on. Um, this article here, the first one, uh, we kind of pinned it to, um, to the front of the website um, it's got a whole bunch of sources here, and you can figure it out. One of these gives you a report that gives you all the different surfaces that a SARS virus can live on in various times under certain conditions, fairly comprehensive. And I haven't done that here. This is the first time I've done this here off of this computer, so I had to remember the URL. There's a URL called uh, cleanbusinessday.com forward slash coronavirus dash downloads that gives you all kinds of resources and downloads. Yesterday, we uh, talked about a template that you can send to your clients if you're thinking about uh, discontinue temporarily discontinuing service. That's a link there. Um, here's a a link to a resource off of ISSA that kind of gives you what each state is doing in terms of executive orders and, you know, by their interpretation of that. Oh, Tom froze for a second there. Yep. Oh, he's back. I'm back. Okay. Back. Um, so where did I lose you? you uh, no, guys for half a second. We're good. Keep going, Tom. Okay, cool. So, um, it looks like it's been updated too. Could be. Yeah. 
It is. It's updated since we looked at it yesterday. Remember? There the answer, was, go ahead. No, the answer is yes. In every state that has an executive order, you know, they, their, their interpretation is uh, residential cleaning is essential. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. The no's mean there's no executive order, so there's right. no ruling to make. Right. Tom, yesterday we said that we would put up the letter um, to for your employees to carry around um, if they are considered, if your company is considered essential service. Did that get put up? Somebody asked uh, you, about that. I sent it. You sent it to me? Uh huh. Yesterday. I didn't see it. <laughs> okay, I can resend. We'll I know that your email is. We'll, 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 we'll get that up uh, tomorrow morning if, if you can, can, we'll, we can figure out why. Right. And we have a couple of ideas also. Trisha wants to know, what do you think about paying staff more to work during this time? So that's, that's an idea. I love that that's a what can we do topic. Um, and then Elena says, what do you do for yourselves to feel better? How do you nurture yourself? Um, that's also a good topic. And I just need guidance through the paid time off thing and all that. So um, I'm Yeah, sorry. yeah. We, need, we just need more information on that, Sarah. Yeah. It's kind of hard to do anything with that until we have more details. So at least till tomorrow, right? And then don't doesn't it have to go to the president after that. Yeah, theoretically, if the House uh, passes it in the morning, it would make it to his desk later tomorrow, and he would probably sign it by the end of the day, I guess, unless, I mean, at this point, who knows, but that's the presumption. Well, maybe we can close out this week with a little bit of an answer there, and a little bit of relief there, Sarah, on that. Uh but again, Sarah, don't, don't, again, Sarah, don't freak out over that. You know, you're protected by the masses. We've been, we've had all these situations over the years with, you know, minimum wage and Affordable Care Act and going all the way back to FMLA even before, you know, it was, you know, in the original form, people were scared about that. I mean, there's always legislation out there. It's like, oh my gosh, what's that going to do to my business? And we've survived all of those and we'll survive this too. Uh, Heather, I'm sorry I stepped away. Where are those resources? Um, I think Tom is, didn't you post it here also, Tom? Uh, if I do my job the way I'm supposed to, yeah, I, I, no. I, I will. Um, and um, ISSA has been promising an employee letter, speaking of the essential service That's great. Um, we'll have one up here, um, at least by tomorrow morning. Uh, it, it's one that I, I wrote up like, I don't know, maybe a week or so ago, but uh, I'm thinking it should be good to go to. Uh, cleaning business today, there we go, coronavirus hyphen downloads. Okay, that's it. Thank you guys for coming on, giving us a, uh, a chance to calm down and relax and have a feeling of doing something instead of just spinning, spinning, spinning. It's great for us as well. Yes. We yes. appreciate your help. Yeah. And, uh, just, just hang in there. Let's just focus and work on the things that, that, that we have control over. Try not to uh, burn too many calories over things that over, over questions that we don't even know what the issues are yet. Just, just work on your the business and you know, we'll, 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 we'll get answers to, to, to the bigger things uh, here shortly. And we'll and see you tomorrow. We'll still, we're not going to have all the answers tomorrow. We need to make that clear. They've already said that a lot of the details aren't coming oh. until April. <laughs> so we won't. Okay. You know, we'll never have all the answers. There's Good always point. more questions. Good point, Tom. Good point. All right. Before we all leave, we're all going to smile and say bye. <laughs> bye, y'all. See you tomorrow. tomorrow. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.